Circle Around Copernicus by Rob Garrett What might the scent of the lily of the valley, a pizza lunch, a strand of hair in a library book, and a mindfulness session on the seashore have to do with each other? Before I go any further, I'd like to thank Monica and our Saulei hosts for organizing this online conference for teachers. The three themes I want to explore today are cross-curricular team teaching, effective mindfulness, and hands-on experiences. This is an overview of the integration of separate school subjects into a single cross-curriculum learning unit through team teaching innovations devised by me and my two colleagues, Anya Pawłowska and Gosia Niewinska. We teach at a private bilingual elementary school in Poland, the American Elementary School in Gdynia, which teaches 271 students from 0 to 8th grade, that is from the ages of 6 to 14. Class sizes are modest, around 16 to 18 students per class, which is ideal for innovations including individualized teaching, experience-based methods, and peer-to-peer -peer learning. Our cross-curriculum unit, Circle Around Copernicus, was devised for two classes of 11-year-olds, 33 students in total, who we all teach within our separate subject areas. We combined learning goals from art and architecture, geography, history, science, maths, and English. The unit was centered on a one-day field trip to the historic town of Frombork, two hours from our school in Gdynia on the Baltic coast. What were our main goals? To make the interdisciplinary experience real for students. To integrate scientific observation, historical perspectives and art activities. To enable a complex and holistic understanding of Copernicus. And to engage our students' imaginations, sensory awareness, mindfulness, analytical skills, and creative expression through hands-on experiences. Key moments in Frombork. The day started with a mindfulness activity in front of the huge statue of Copernicus. We imitated the pose of the sculpture with eyes closed to feel it and understand its character. We observed the style and symbolism including the artist imitating the style of Poland's prehistoric figurative standing stones as a symbol of cultural continuity, the lily of the valley as a symbol of medicine, and that Copernicus stands with his eyes closed. What might he be thinking and feeling? And each student created an empathic and expressionist drawing of the sculpture. Visiting Foucault's pendulum and climbing the viewing tower helped us understand the rotation and curvature of the Earth. Inside the cathedral, we learned about discovering Copernicus's burial place, and we learned about Gothic pointed arches and the ideas that inspired their adoption throughout Europe. Visiting the Medicine and Pharmacology Museum helped us understand that Copernicus was a true Renaissance man, astronomer, mathematician, and medical doctor. After all that, we needed a hearty pizza lunch. Then we walked to the shore for our mindfulness activity on the pier or breakwater. Here, students experienced the environment with their eyes closed, opening all their other senses plus the scent of the lily of the valley, which we wafted under each child's nose. Then, opening their eyes, students created an artwork of their whole sensory experience. Our day ended in the town square. This was a brainstorming activity in groups to reflect on and discuss all the connections between information, sights, symbols, experiences, and feelings from the day. Students even realized that the pizzas they ate for lunch mimicked the Copernican solar system in a whimsical way because they were circular and cut into eight segments, reflecting the eight known planets at the time of Copernicus. 
We were also accompanied by two teachers from Italy who were shadowing us and our colleagues at school. This enabled our teaching team to benefit from some valuable peer-to-peer -peer feedback and critique. No, ja to też właśnie chciałam pokazać czy powiedzieć, że a, namacalnie można było zobaczyć i ten labirynt przed kościołem i te dekoracje, w, średniowieczne dekoracje w katedrze fromborskiej i połączenie, co było dla mnie szczególnie ciekawe, co Mr. Rob nam pokazał, jak współcześni artyści są inspirowani sztuką nawet prehistoryczną, ponieważ jeden z monumentów, jeden z po, główny pomnik w Mikołaja Kopernika we Fromborku no jest połączony pewnym, pewną, pewnym pomysłem, ideą właśnie ze sztuką prehistoryczną. Także tego dzieci nie widziałyby w podręcznikach. Trudno by im to było pokazać, a zetknięcie się z takimi elementami no na żywo bez wątpienia pozostanie dla nich ciekawym bardzo doświadczeniem. Jednym z elementów, o którym opowiadałam dzieciom, jest miejsce pochówku Mikołaja Kopernika. Ono przez wiele lat było tajemnicą. Współczesne badania, głównie genetyczne, umożliwiły nam odkrycie czy połączenie ciała, które zostało odkryte w katedrze we Fromborku z badaniami. Nie wiedzieliśmy, kogo, kogo wydobyliśmy z grobu, natomiast włos, który został odkryty w jednej z ksiąg, należących do Kopernika w, w bibliotece w Szwecji umożliwił nam połączenie. Także to też pokazuje takie no, fantastyczne możliwości nauki, również nauki współczesnej. I to też chcieliśmy pokazać dzieciom. To, co mi szczególnie utkwiło, to jest to, czego dowiedziałam się od y, y, pani z Włoch, która była na wymianie u nas w szkole. Y, przepięknym labiryncie, który budowany był przed kościołami w średniowieczu. I ten labirynt został tam odtworzony. I myślę, że to dzieciom też utkwi w głowach. During our follow-up lessons, students used their field notes to reflect on and discuss what they had learned. They created artworks of their most memorable experiences a 3D model of the solar system, scale models of the planets, and they shared their work and reflections within the school community. And students, they didn't realize that actually they are having real lessons. They were enjoying trip, but they could learn a lot of things uh, by experience. They could understand that real world it's not actually divided into subjects. That's what we do on our regular lessons in a classroom. Uh, they could experience different approach and they smoothly um, went from one subject to the other. How lovely they connect different aspects. I really appreciate uh, the mindfulness activities during this field trip, during this project. Uh, so far, I was kind of skeptic to mindfulness activities that I experienced in a classroom. Students had a problem to actually focus on, um, on the moment right now. Um, but when I observe how, they, how much they gain, by uh, focusing on senses on a peer and then how they easily start to uh, draw what they see, what they hear, what they smell. That was really something that surprised me positively and definitely I'm gonna, um, I changed my mind <laughs> into uh, mindfulness um, uh, activities. That's what I know that definitely we have to uh, reorganize our school. Definitely cross-curricular, it should be the main goal. Uh, after this trip, and also the way how we teachers were working, I, I felt really comfortable to work with all of you and the way how we mm, just do not disturb each other and we all did our job. Our conclusions. Students showed they could handle the unit's complexity and the free-flowing structure of the field trip. They showed they could gain important insights through the two mindfulness activities. First, when empathizing with the pose of the Copernicus statue, and second, when they opened all their senses on the pier. In sum, 
they were able to join the dots during our circle around Copernicus through experience, reflection, analysis, discussion, and creative expression. Teachers also gained new insights and strengthened their belief in the value of cross-curricular team teaching and innovative hands-on learning.